Well, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Jesus Christ has triumphed over sin and death, but his triumph was not triumphalistic. Instead, it was achieved by the humility and humiliation of the cross. But one day, his methodology will certainly change. One day, Jesus will return with glory and power to judge the living and the dead. And every human being that has ever existed from the beginning of time is going to be there. Each one of us is going to be there, whether we want to or not. That said, turn with me to today's gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, where Jesus describes himself as the future king of the nations. And Jesus said in Matthew 25, verses 31 to 32, When the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. Now today, the church ends the liturgical, the liturgical year proclaiming that Jesus is the king of the universe. Verse 32. And he will separate from them from one another as a shepherd, as a shepherd separates, from, separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Okay, so let's stop right there. Our Lord Jesus is in the ark of tab the is in the ark tabernacle now imagine that we are right now like in the last judgment and we all are present and we all represent like all the nations gathered before the king and just imagine all those sitting on the right of the king the right side of the church are the sheep and all those on the left side of the church are the goats so question, according to the gospel, all the sheep will be going where? To heaven? Come you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. And all the goats, where will they go? The king will say to those on the left, then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and the angels. They're going to go to... Hell, now don't be nervous if you're on the left side. It's just a demonstration, okay? Just a demonstration. So the big question is, in the eyes of God, are you a goat or are you a sheep? Well, let's look at the difference and make sure and see if you really are a sheep. You know, here the goats represent all like the evil people who only think about themselves, okay? The, with the goats, it's all about me. I think the sound the goats make might sound something like this. Me. It's all about what? Me. <laughs> me. Okay. For example, in verse 44, the goats responded to Jesus. Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or strange or naked or ill in prison and not minister to your needs? Now, look, note that the first word that the goats spoke was, Lord. This teaches us that it's not enough to call Jesus Lord with your lips. We must believe it and then live it. The goats gave our Lord Jesus lip service. Oh, Lord, Lord. For the goats, it was all about me. Yes, Jesus is my king so that he can make me rich and famous. Jesus is my Lord so that he can give me all I want. Those are, what are they? The goats. Be careful if you pray like me, like that, okay? But Jesus, if we knew it was you, of course we would have helped you. It just that we thought it was just someone not important like you. Brothers, for Jesus, every person is important. Even the least little baby is important. But there are people that are willing to help others, but if, only if they receive something in return. I don't, that's not generosity. I think that's disguised selfishness. In other words, the goats represent selfish people. I'm reminded of the song of Frank Sinatra. I've lived a life that's full. 
I've traveled each and every highway and much, much more than this. I did it my way. If you base your life on that song, and that's like your song, then Jesus is not your king. And you're probably a goat. Okay, because we were created not to do it my way. We were created to do it God's way. Now, the sheep are different from the goats. The sheep represents those who give of themselves without complaint and without expecting personal gain. The sheep will go to be slaughtered and not even say a word. They didn't even know they were serving Christ in the needy. In other words, the sheep love with a genuine disinterested love. And Jesus gives us six areas in which he identifies with the people. One, giving food to the hungry. Not only food, not only for food, but for knowledge, for companionship, for love. Number two, giving drink to the thirsty. Not only for water, but for justice and peace. Number three, welcoming the stranger, but also those who have lost their path and purpose in life. Number four, clothing the naked. Not just for clothes, but clothing those who have lost their dignity or by sexual abuse or prostitution or pornography. Five, caring for the sick, not only in their body, but also the sick in their soul or their spirit. And six, visiting the prisoner, not only in the prison cell, but those that are prisoners in depression or addiction. And if we include burying the dead, this list is known as the seven corporal works of mercy. And Jesus said, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. You know, what impacts me is that Jesus identifies himself with the most humble and even calls them my brother. This means that Jesus also identifies with you and identifies with me. So do me a favor, please tell the person next to you, Jesus identifies himself with you. Could you just say that? Jesus identifies himself with, with you. And this is like really important. It's, it's not about the sinners versus the saints or the imprisoned versus the free. It's not about us versus them. Jesus wants to teach you to identify with the person in need. Okay, everyone please repeat after me. You did it to me. You did it, did to, it me. to me. Exactly. So if someone disrespects a person, please repeat, you did, you did it, to, it me. to me. If someone does not feed the hungry, please repeat, you, you did, did it, it to me. me. If you do not welcome the stranger, please repeat, you did, you did, it, did it to me. me. If you do not visit the imprisoned person, repeat, you, you did, did it, it to me. me. If a man physically abuses his wife, repeat, you, you did, did it to me. me. If my neighbors were robbed, please repeat, you, you did, did it to me. me. If an unborn baby is destroyed in the womb, please repeat, you did, you did it, it to me. me. This is how Jesus loves us. He identifies with us, and this is how Jesus wants us to love others, to identify with them, to be in solidarity with them. Question, at the end of time, we will be judged on what? Will we be judged on our fame or the size of our bank account or the knowledge of the Bible? Like John 10.10, 10. you know John 10.10, 10. Oh, you're going to hell. No, of course not. At the end of time, we will be judged on only one thing. Did we live our faith with? With love. Whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for? For me. In the end, Jesus is not going to ask you what type of car or golf cart you had. But he will ask if you helped the person who did not have a driver's license or a transportation. In the end, Jesus is not going to ask you, how many square feet is your house? But if you gave him lodging when he visited you. Jesus is not going to ask you how much clothes you have in your closet, but did you provide him clothes when he was naked? Jesus is not going to ask you about the amount of your salary, but what you did with your salary to help the poor and the mission of the church. Jesus is not going to ask you to uh, ask you in what neighborhood you live in, but how did you treat your neighbors? He will not ask about the color of your skin, but yes, the content of your character. 
In other words, the sheep are those people who, without expecting anything in return, served simply for love. For love. Okay, do me a favor. Please look at the crucifix right there. The crucifix reminds us that Christ's kingdom was achieved by a love that is willing to sacrifice itself. That's where Jesus was proclaimed king. The little sign, I-N-R-I, that's what it means in Latin, Jesus Nazarene, king of the Jews. When you have a crucifix in your house or your home or you carry it around your neck, it is an external sign that Jesus is supposed to be who? Your king. However, Jesus did not want just to be like an ornament or a decoration. Jesus truly wants to be the Lord and the king of your life. Question, does anyone know when this solemnity, the solemnity of Christ the king was instituted? Well, let's learn about it. The solemnity of Christ the King was first instituted by Pope Pius XI in the year 1925. What was happening in the world in 1925? For example, in the United States. Well, the Great Depression occurred in October of 1929. But in the years before that, they were in the Roaring Twenties. That's what it was called. And the country in the United States, they were having a good old time with music like the ragtime and weird dances like the, like the, hoochie, the hoochie coochie or something like that. Funny clothing like zoot suits. Now, but just south of the border in the country of Mexico where I'm from, something very different was taking place. The persecution of the Catholic Church as never seen before in the continent of America was taking place in Mexico. In 1925, General Elias Calles, the president of Mexico, motivated by a Masonic ideology, ident intensified the persecution of the Catholic Church with the purpose of exterminating the Catholic faith in Mexico. And by 1926, many bishops in Mexico were arrested and all the churches were closed. And public religious services and even private religious acts were completely prohibited. Priests who said mass or celebrated the sacraments or nuns who kept their vows or the laity who sheltered priests or concealed the blessed sacrament even in their homes risked being arrested or tortured or even executed. It was at this time that the Cristero War of 1926 to 1928 began when K with the Catholic lay militias and uh, started into fighting, revolting against the corrupt government of Elias Caes. There's an excellent movie named For Greater Glory about the Cristero War, and I encourage you to watch it. It's a great movie. And it was at this time that the Pope instituted the solemnity of Christ the King to remind the nations that when any person or organization or even nation insults the name of our Lord, we are to proclaim it that much louder that Jesus is King. Now, there were many martyrs in Mexico during this time. I'll give you one amazing example. At this time, a young Jesuit priest named Father Miguel Agustin Pro came home, to came home to Mexico from his studies in Belgium. He found that all the churches in Mexico were, were closed. But that didn't stop Father Pro. He began to practice clandestine ministry in Mexico City. And, and he began to practice, you know, by dressing up in, in costumes. Like a good shepherd, he established communion stations in private homes throughout the city. And he was very clever at evading the police by wearing different disguises. And by 1927, Father Crow became the scapegoat of an assassination attempt on the corrupt future president, handpicked by General Calles, named Álvaro Obregón. And without due process, without a trial, Father Pro and his brother, Father Humberto, were condemned to be executed. They were innocent of any crime. They had the evidence to prove that. But they were guilty of one thing. They were being Catholic priests and they wanted to show the people 
who was the boss, the government. And on the morning of November the 23rd, just a few days ago, in the year 1927, Father Miguel Pro was led from his prison cell to the courtyard of a police station. And as a last request, Father Pro asked to be able to pray. So he forgave the executioners and he knelt in prayer. This is a picture of that moment. That's him kneeling before that police officer. Then he kissed a small crucifix that he always carried with him and stood up, stretched his arms out, wide in the shape of a cross. And as a squad raised their weapons, Father Pro triumphantly proclaimed, Viva Cristo Rey! Long live Christ the King! And with great courage, Father Pro met his martyrdom. This is the next picture right there. Just hold him. Moments before he was shot. Come you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. On September 25th, 1988, Pope John Paul II beatified Father Miguel Agustin Pro. My dear brothers and sisters, who is your king? If Christ Jesus is your king, then repeat after me a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I acknowledge you, I acknowledge you as, king of the universe, as king of the universe and king of my heart. And king of my heart. Remember me, Remember me when, you come into your kingdom. when you come into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. So that one day, you can also sing, I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway and much, much more than this. I did it God's way. Viva Cristo Rey. Viva. Mr. Abel, could you go and tell them to stop the drumming, please? Thank you.